Welcome to Spectrum Sundays. I am Francesca D'Alessandro, a current master's student at University of Buffalo studying speech language pathology. Additionally, I am your Miss Thousand Islands of New York State, serving my community through AAA appreciation and awareness for autism. And I am Megan Sinisi, a Master of Health Science candidate studying to practice as a pediatric speech language pathologist. I am also Miss Central Pennsylvania and the founder of a nonprofit organization for autism titled From a New Perspective. Everyone deserves to feel accepted and included in every space they walk in. Our series aims to inspire you to advocate for yourself and on behalf of your loved ones. And we are so grateful that you're here with us today. This week, we are excited to welcome back Margaret Carpenter Dove, who is a candidate for the Miss Connecticut 2021 year. In her year of service as Miss Greater Hamden, Margaret proudly represents the autistic community and advocate, uh, advocates for disability awareness through her social impact initiative. She attends Vista Life Innovations Special Needs School, where she studies vocational and life skills and serves as a student ambassador, ambassador and trainee. Throughout her academic and Miss America organization journey, she hopes to earn scholarships to further her education and to one day become a pageant choreographer. So that's really exciting that you have all that going on for you and you love dance and you're a superb athlete as we've learned from our previous episode. But for anyone who has missed your first episode with us, which was episode 47, could you give us a quick background and of yourself and inspiration behind your advocacy? Well, basically, I um, wasn't really good at sports as a little kid. I mostly just did horseback riding, but as I got older, I did dance when I was 19. Since I was 19, I'm currently 21. I've been doing dance for a few years. I loved to dance since I was little, but I didn't start taking lessons or classes till I was 19. I did soccer at 19. I did basketball at 19 I wasn't too good at it I did floor hockey in gym class I was really good at floor hockey that's why I kept acing gym class even though I wasn't an athlete I was like the nerd kid that would ace gym class and I would get the tests correct I know it sounds weird <laughs> and I'd be like well this is how you play and then they'd be like what and then I'd start playing I love that yeah um so yeah. Yeah, and I did gymnastics when I was 16, but I wasn't too good. I, I mostly did recreational and Special Olympics, but I wasn't too competitive. I took a long time with that. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't really my thing. But when I did dance and soccer at my transition program, that's when I really realized I liked it because doing dance through one big circle when I was younger and then um, doing uh, like at 19 and doing dance at Vista and doing soccer at Vista made me realize that when I did it at the end of my high school career doing dance and then doing soccer at my transition program and dance at my transition program made me realize I like those sports you know that's so cool it sounds like you're really active and involved on Vista Life campus and being involved just on campus with different kinds of sports throughout your your academic career but yeah, I just do dance and soccer recently. That's what I've stuck to. I only do dance, soccer, basketball, and kickball. That's all I do on campus. I no longer do gymnastics. I no longer do floor hockey. I no longer do horseback riding, but I would like to get back into floor hockey, you know. Cool. So are there any other hobbies outside of sports that you enjoy doing in your free time? I love to play flute. Oh, very cool. I played flute since I was nine. I was in the band class a lot. I was regular level. I wasn't honors or anything, but I did really well with it and I enjoyed it, you know. Wow, that is awesome. So is flute going to be your talent for Miss Connecticut or do you have something no. else in store? I'm doing dance. What type of dance do you use or do you usually do for Miss Connecticut in your competitions? I've never done Miss Connecticut before, like I said. Mm -hmm. This is my first time. So I'm doing like, the, I'm experimenting with it. It's my first pageant, like I said, you know, my first competition. Yeah. So yeah. I've never competed. I've fought at large. So I'm attempting to do like this hip hop ish, tumble ish sort of um, 
like martial artist type of style, culturist type of style dance. I don't explain it, but I'm doing the hip hop version of Get Ready to Fight by Tiger Shroff. So I'm like copying like the moves that he did at Miss Diva India, sort of put, watering it down to an adaptive level, you know. Right. That sounds very cool. I actually used to take a class very similar to what you're describing, and we did um, Hammer Time, or I think that's what it was called, by MC Hammer. <laughs> oh, no, Don't Touch This by MC Hammer, and it was the most fun that I've ever had. So hopefully we get to watch videos of your dance routine. And Margaret, you mentioned that your journey so far in Miss America has been pretty short. You just received your title, and we're honored to learn that you could go for Miss Connecticut. So in this short time is Miss Greater Hamden. What has been your favorite memory? My favorite memory I'd have to say um would I only have like two memories because I be with um with um with other peers and stuff because basically I had a crowning with Jill and Lindia. I had um a um appearance and with like the excuse me, with the um, rehabilitation center with New Haven County and New Haven County is at Standing Teen. And then I had um, the um, photo shoot with Ashley McLean. I liked all of those, you know. But my headshots I didn't do with the sponsors, so that doesn't really count, but still a good memory. All those memories were really awesome, but I never got to hang out with the girls as much as I'd like too mm -hmm. though but I will for rehearsals and I'm hoping that will be nice you know yes that's right around the corner so there are many memories to be made that are waiting right around the corner for you yeah I just haven't found the best one yet I've just barely experienced it I know plenty of room to grow and to have many different experiences going forward and mm -hmm. you have a whole year until you have to give up your title again next year true Mm -hmm. And Megan and I were just gushing over how gorgeous your headshot was. And we've been following you on Instagram for a little while and we've been seeing you post them and they look beautiful. So we can definitely Thanks. see how they're some of your favorite memories. Now, hopefully the one I chose out of my headshots got like um, selected through my file folders because I've been having trouble downloading everything through the file folders. So hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully, Ashley is gone and all the stuff because I emailed her everything and I'm hoping everything got through when I redid it and uploaded to the new folder and sent her everything you know mm -hmm. well hopefully that works out perfectly okay for you with no problems but as we're going and looking forward to this Miss Connecticut competition coming up in April what is the thing that you're most looking forward to um talent social impact scholarship service sisterhood all that stuff you know yeah there's lots i love serving i love the talent stuff i love the social impact i love the sisterhood i love the scholarships i'm gonna be getting for college stuff but mostly i'm doing it for like the sisterhood and the networking you know what i mean yeah. so i love networking with people to get like closer to um get my dream job and i love the sisterhood and i love that they're like love service and it's not just like near typicals who don't care about service it's people who care about service but they're also awesome people you know what I mean it's not just awesome people who don't care about service you know what I mean and that really makes me feel inspired because I'm like that really gives me hope that like people are, are actually nice despite having like um no diagnosis and, and that's why I really want to get to know them better even though I haven't met most of them, I have FaceTimed one and I have met a couple, a few at a certain event, a certain appearance, and most of them were nice. You know, I haven't met any that were mean. The only person that I met that wasn't that nice wasn't being mean at all. They were just picky, you know. So there was a certain staff member that was picking at our clothes and stuff, just saying like, you should dress nice or certain people, but that was just a staff member. I guess she's just like that. <laughs> other than that, people are really nice, even though I don't really talk to most of them other than on Zoom, you know what I mean? Yes, a lot of our conversations and events have been over Zoom. So it's great to hear that you've had that positive experience so far. And going off of this topic of characteristics and qualities, 
that you have witnessed in your peers and other competitors, what do you think makes a strong title holder for Miss America? Diversity, definitely, you know. Yeah, I totally agree. And we were just talking in our last episode about how you as a person are so diverse in your interests and you're always staying true to who you are. And that is such an important characteristic and a strong title holder. So I agree with you on that one. And I also love kids because I've done like daycare stuff in my high school and I haven't done that in a while, but I, 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 at first wanted to be a teacher in high school or a vet and I loved animals, but I wasn't interested in that because I was specifically into cats not other animals then I realized wait that's not what I want to do and then I'm like do I want to be a teacher no I mean I loved kids and stuff but it wasn't it was like at first I thought it might be my calling teaching but then I'm like no and then when I go to Vista I'm like I explore this dance stuff and I'm like aha do I want to do pageant choreography and then I realized the perfect dream job would be a pageant choreographer but also work with like the princess programs or like the big sister little sister programs within like pageantry stuff so like doing both of those things what interests me like being a pageant choreographer but then later on going back to school to work with like the, the little kids in the programs and do both as two different jobs through pageant systems you know so I could like work with the kid camps and programs in pageants but also choreograph them that would be like my ideal life <laughs> right yeah. you get the best of both worlds yeah and it sounds like you really love touching the lives of other people and inspiring them to really flourish so if there's advice that you could give other women who uh, have autism or, or who are autistic who might be interested in competing for miss america what words of encouragement would you give them what i would give them is um go for it and if this is not your system then you should try a system that meets the requirements you meet. So just because you like one system doesn't mean it's end all be all because there's plenty of systems. You should go after this one if you want to. And even if this is not your system, give it a chance because to be honest, originally wanted to do the Miss Universe system that didn't end up working out. So I did the Miss America system. So the best suggestion is go after the system that works best for you and go for it you know yeah because yeah. like just sign yourself up because then eventually your parents can go on board after with you take the risk and sign yourself up and then just ask them for the payment and then they'll be like I'll do it once that you find the one that's right for you you know yeah and it's great that you're getting involved Margaret and you're sharing your story because I'm certain that there are other women with autism out there that have wanted to pursue something like Miss America or other opportunities that are at this caliber and at this visibility and you're being an inspiration for them just by participating. True. So I originally wanted to do the Miss Universe system but the problem was I wasn't a full-time college student and I wasn't a person who worked 45 hours. I was just a resident and since the Miss America system brought back their residency requirement, that's how I was able to compete basically. As Vista does not count as a college, so I had to do this organization through my residency and my high school diploma and that's how I was able to compete. Well, shifting topics a little bit away from Miss America and back to autism awareness, what are some resources that you use um, that are helpful to raise awareness and to garner support for people with autism? Resources, um, I have this um, this chat group, I don't explain it, but I have this um, chat group where I share like different awareness for certain people during the quarantine stuff. I've been part of this group for autism, you know, online, this like chat forum and I've met people through that, through that and I've gave them that advice, but that doesn't really count as much, you know. Um, I used different organizations when I was in high school, you know. And then um, I'm in my special needs program and I work with different disabilities through my special needs program, but I don't really have like a resource I would necessarily per se use, you know what I mean? I just, I just, do various I just do various organizations I'm involved in 
or have been involved in the past or want to be involved in. I'm still figuring things out. It's great to hear that you have even a group chat of support with like-minded people and it's a resource that you can go to if you need support. Yeah, that is great. So on Spectrum Sundays, we really try to build a stronger community to embrace the diversity uh, between us. And that is mostly through acceptance. So what advice could you give to our viewers about how to practice acceptance and inclusion and also celebrate the diversity that we each bring to the table? And I also have my special needs school that I'm involved in. That's another resource I use, you know? Yeah. So inclusion, how would I, I don't know, explain it, but try to be the one, be in the inclusion. So try including them yourself. So like go after what you want, don't give up and then try to be the inclusion for others. That's what I'm trying to do. And that's what I've done in the past is try to include people myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? It sounds like you're leading through example, which can be hard sometimes, but is one of the best ways to really practice acceptance and inclusion in our community. Exactly. Yeah. And I thought because I have autism, why not do that? So, yeah. Well, Margaret, thank you so much for sharing your time with us again today. We really loved learning more about you and your interests. And we're just very much looking forward to all the things that you accomplish. Thanks. So thank you everybody for watching. Please make sure to follow Margaret on Instagram at Margaret Carpenter D2 and on Twitter at Margaret Carp D2 if you would like to support her efforts as a disability advocate. And if you missed Margaret's original visit with us, you can go back to listen to her first segment, which was episode 47 of Spectrum Sundays. Thank you, everyone, and we will see you next Sunday. Bye. Thank you for listening to Spectrum Sundays. We are your hosts, Miss Thousand Islands, Francesca D'Alessandro, and Miss Central Pennsylvania, Megan Sinisi. Please make sure to subscribe to our series and follow us on social media to stay connected with autism professionals and self-advocates. And remember, true impact is accomplished through active listening and exploring the world through a variety of perspectives. Join us next week on Spectrum Sundays to help cultivate a community of inclusion, appreciation, and acceptance around autism.